Hey, if you're new here, welcome. I'm new too. Well, sort of. I like learning new things. And so, I wanted to see what it was like to learn how to make a game. With very little knowledge in any of the skills required to make a game. Like, very little. If the idea of learning something from scratch is interesting to you, I hope you'll join me on this journey, and maybe even start a project of your own, whether it's game development like me, or something completely different. Don't worry if it's not the best thing ever, because we're all learning. So keep learning so you can keep making, and give the world something that's uniquely you. My first game has come a long way. We have a player that can move and shoot, spawning enemies with AI, a difficulty progression system the longer you stay alive. But here's the thing with the difficulty progression. I want the player to feel the intensity the longer they stay alive. But what I usually find myself doing when I'm backed up into a corner is this. I feel like some of that intensity is lost because I know I can just circle around off screen if things get crazy. What I think we need is an arena. We can always change the design at some point, but something simple like this should do for now. Now let's add some collision to the outer barrier. All right, here's my first obstacle. What I was looking to do was have one collision shape with a cutout in the center. I spent probably too long researching before I realized, wait, I can just make four separate collision shapes, one for each side, but it works. Next, I want the bullets to disappear when they hit the barrier. So let me turn on collision. Oh yeah, we probably need a cue free in there somewhere. I created an area 2D and did just that for when an object from the bullet group enters. And it works! But it seems like it goes past the barrier a little and I don't know why. If you think you might know, feel free to leave a comment because I don't know. Next, we need to add Wait. Okay, next we need to adjust the coin spawns because they don't know where the barrier is. We need to make sure that the coins only spawn within the barrier itself. For this, first we need to look at the size of the barrier. I also want to make sure that the experience is consistent for everyone, no matter the size of their display. Previously, I was taking in the resolution of the player's screen to decide the acceptable area for the coins to spawn but that meant the higher resolution the player's screen, the more distance there could be between the spawns, and that isn't very consistent. To fix this, first I made the barrier a consistent size, independent of the player's screen resolution. Next, we have to look at the size of the arena in order to fix the coin spawns. The arena size is 1720 by 880, with 200 pixels of empty space around the outside. We can't just use this dimension to calculate the spawn though, because we also have an inner stroke on the barrier that takes away from the active area where the player can move. This stroke is 10 pixels, which means the total amount of negative space around the arena is 210 pixels. To calculate the horizontal dimension of the spawn, we need to generate a random number between 210 and 1920 minus 210 with 1920 being the size of the arena plus the 200 pixels of empty space. We can simplify this to 1710. For the vertical dimension, we can get it in a similar way by generating a random number between 210 and 1080 minus 210, or 870. If we take the intersecting area between both of these ranges, we have the possible area where the coin is allowed to spawn provided it's at least 300 pixels away from the player. We could stop here, but we're left with an arena that doesn't do much besides keep the player from going off screen. That would be fine, I guess, but I want it to have more of a role in the gameplay. The idea I have is that as you reach certain point thresholds, the arena's size is able to change. For this, I'll need a new node I haven't used before. My thoughts on this node? It's really great. I'm already used to working with keyframes while making these videos, and it turns out that's exactly how the animation player handles animations too. 
I made an animation, gave it a name, and set it to shrink the scale from 100% down to 80% over the course of 3 seconds. I also added some easing to make the animation appear more smooth. Let's add it to the ready function and see if we did it right. Nice, but the change seems a little too drastic. Maybe we'll have it decrease in increments of 5% instead. Much better. We don't want the difficulty to jump too quickly. Now we need to link it to the wave scene, which is the scene that controls the difficulty progression. I started by making a variable that would indicate what level the barrier would be for that wave of enemies. As the barrier level increases, the arena size decreases. But wait, we have another issue. Remember the spawn area that we set for the coin? That also needs to be linked to the barrier level, because if the size of the arena shrinks, we might have a coin spawning outside of the barrier. We'll probably change this at some point, but for a quick fix, I just took the barrier level and multiplied it by a number that's definitely overkill to use as a buffer for the coin spawn. Don't look too hard at this, please. It's held together with the strength of gift tape and applesauce. Now back to connecting the barrier level to the waves. Since I want there to be multiple barrier levels, we need a way of keeping track of the current level it's at, as well as when it's time to switch. I solved this by first creating a variable that grabs the barrier level from the waves node. This tells us what level the barrier should be at for the current wave. Next, we need to perform a check. If this level does not equal the current level that the barrier is at, we need to update the barrier size. We'll do this with a function that takes in our wave's barrier level as a parameter, which holds the new barrier level. In this function, we'll make an array that holds the current level of the barrier, as well as the new level that it's turning into. Now we can make a match statement that matches this array to the correct animation that should play. So if the barrier is changing from level 0 to level 1, play the level 0 to 1 animation. If it's changing from level 1 to level 2, play the level 1 to 2 animation. Once this is done, we can set the current barrier level to the new one so we're ready for if it changes again. By doing it this way, I can easily add more barrier levels by making more animations and adding them to this match statement. With the barrier working, I'm free to add more enemy waves, which I think I'll do. But there's something else that needs our attention too. By now, we've put so much time into adjusting how the coins spawn, but there's still no use for them. I think we need to work on that next. See you then.